What's up guys, Mikkel here, and in this video, I want to cover a pretty controversial topic, and that's whether or not XRP could one day be used for domestic payments. Now, there's a lot of people who say there is no way XRP will ever be used domestic. It will only be used for cross-border payments. In this video, I want to show you why I actually do think there's a place for XRP to be used domestically. I actually want to show you a clip from a banker specifically talking about this, and then show you exactly why XRP could be useful domestically. Now, the reason why this is so important is because I want to show you that XRP's total addressable market is actually so much bigger than what many people believe. This is really going to open to your eyes how transformational XRP is going to be in our future financial system, not only cross borders, but domestically as well. Like always, your support means so much to this channel. If you enjoy these videos, make sure to take a quick second to like this video and subscribe to my channel. It's really going to help me out so much. Also, if you ever need a good place to buy some XRP or the Flare token, make sure to check out my favorite exchange I'll pull down in the description of this video. With that said though, let's jump right into it and I hope you guys enjoy the content. So I want to start out this video with something I think is very important. A lot of people like to say there is no way XRP will ever be used for domestic payments. And I just want to start off with a slide from actually a Ripple presentation where they're actually talking about domestic payments. And I think it's really important we start here because if Ripple is talking about domestic payments, then I don't think it's that absurd to think that Ripple could have a strategy in the future involving domestic payments. So right here we see Ripple a platform for innovation central banks and national infrastructures can engage with ripple to innovate with proven building blocks and distributed ledger technology preserve sovereign rights while transacting seamlessly with regional economies for global growth and right here under national payments we see domestic immediate payments so this is pretty interesting because so many people have said over the years there is no way ripple and xrp will ever be used domestic well right here we see ripple specifically pitching the idea of using xrp domestically so first of all i think this is a pretty important thing that we at least discuss because if ripple is specifically pitching this as a product then i don't think it is that out of the question obviously we know ripple is always going to be critical in global payments because this is where there's the most friction but i actually want to paint a picture for you where there could be a scenario where there might be a lot more friction domestically than many people realize and i want to show you how xrp could actually solve that problem I want to show you one other thing first though, and that's that the CEO of SBI, one of the largest banks in Japan, actually came out and said that he believes every bank in Japan will be using XRP by 2025. Now, the reason I put this out there is because this is just another example of where XRP could be used domestically. If every single bank in Japan is using XRP, then the reason they're doing that is because they have some kind of transaction going on domestically in the country. This is just another example of high level people telling us, hey, there might be use cases for XRP in a domestic sense. Now, the main reason why this is so important is because this is something that people have said for years is never gonna happen. People said they'll never use XRP domestically because there's just not enough friction there. But what I just showed you is that we have one of the largest banks in Japan telling us banks in Japan are going to use XRP domestically, and we also have Ripple specifically pitching it as a product. So now I want to share with you a Twitter space I was in the other day with a lady by the name of Shannon Thorpe. She actually works in Wells Fargo's Treasury Management Division, and we were specifically talking about whether or not XRP could be used domestically. And I want you to listen carefully to what she says here, because it's going to really help you understand exactly why there is a use case for XRP domestically. Everyone who kind of dismisses this idea, their main reason for why they think this idea is absurd or it's not going to happen is because they are convinced that payments domestically are fluid and there's no friction. I think what this is going to show you is there's actually a lot more friction than many people are leading on to believe, and it's going to give you a much better understanding of exactly why XRP can solve these problems. Listen up to this. Uh, Mikko, we'll, we'll go a couple more minutes so Shannon can go. Again, Shannon, welcome to our family. If anything we can do, thank you. we got you. But Mikko's another adult. Mikko, go for it. Yeah, it's super awesome to uh, talk to you. So thanks for taking the time. Uh, I was just wondering, completely outside of your own um, experience in the banking sector, uh, you obviously seem like someone who studied XRP and Ripple. So why don't could you just give me kind of your thesis on where this company and digital asset ends up in the next 10 years or just how you see it becoming important to the financial system in the future in your own personal capacity? Oh, that's a great question. Um, 
Ripple, I feel, would be... Um, they will be the B1 uh, entity, I guess I could say, um, that is going to take over global payments. I just see it. Um, that's my personal opinion. I don't work for Ripple. I'm not endorsed by Ripple. I mean, they're here to make a dent in the universe. You know, They've said it too. Yeah. And I mean, there's a huge problem globally within the financial system. And honestly, no bank has been able to communicate with one another ever. That's never been a thing. Bank of America cannot communicate with Wells Fargo. That's why we have SWIFT and every all these other third parties in place. These banks cannot communicate. And I feel like that is where the game changer is with Ripple, is that this puts everyone on the same network. And I just... Mind, this is bigger than what most people can fathom in their own mind. And I'm just trying to push the info out there. I mean, I just, I don't know how else to. Yeah, and, and now, I thought that was a really interesting clip, specifically when Shannon said, these banks cannot talk to each other. Now, this is something I have talked about on this channel before, but it definitely gives me a lot of validation when I actually hear it from a banker themselves. It lets me know that the problems that I see are actually happening, and it's not just me thinking they're problems, but not actually real problems. So what she's saying is, say this blue bank right here wants to communicate with this red bank. Well, in order for them to communicate, they need to have all their engineers work on the back end to create some kind of connection. And as you heard from Shannon, that connection barely even works. Now, what she alludes to is you kind of need a third party to facilitate that connection. So there's Swift and there's all these different other technology providers who can help make this connection, but then that's only one connection. So then they need to leverage a different provider to make this other connection all the way over here to this pink bank. And then they need to leverage another provider to make this other connection to this green bank. And yes, this bank can eventually connect to all these different banks. But then say the red bank also wants to connect to the green bank and the red bank also wants to connect to the pink bank. And what you can see is we very quickly just create this massive spider web of connections and it's such an inefficient way of doing things. We have all these third parties trying to connect all these different banks, but it's a massively inefficient way of doing it. And as Shannon said right there, having the third party in the middle is just another place for friction because the banks themselves can't make these connections. It's something people really don't appreciate. These banks are good at running a bank, but they're not good at technology. And to connect all these different banks, you need good technology, and that's something these banks don't do. So we have this massive inefficient spider web of third parties trying to connect all these banks and it is completely not needed. What we need is just XRP in the middle of all of this to connecting all these different banks. Once you have XRP in the middle, all you need is one bank to connect to Ripple and XRP and they're instantly connected to everyone else on the network. And boom, every single one of these banks can now communicate to each other in an agnostic, neutral, and level playing field kind of way. This is so important to understand because Shannon right here tells you that even domestically, this is a massive issue. What Ripple and XRP are doing is allowing all these banks to communicate on a neutral level playing field. And the technology is exponentially better. We actually have the value moving instantaneously. Do you know how often it is critical for one of these banks to get money there instantaneously and settled? That is never going to happen with any other rails outside of XRP. The money is not going to settle in an efficient manner. XRP allows that to happen because it is using technology that has never been seen before in the banking sector. I send payments all the time that I think need to be instantaneous. I send payments all the time that I wish could be instantaneous, but they aren't. And I'm just one small person who barely even runs a business. These massive banks probably have so many payments they need to make instantaneously and they can't do it. Ripple and XRP, no matter what you think, are going to be a critical tool on some level domestically. And I think a lot of people just think in absolutes. They think, oh, there's no way all these banks are only going to run on XRP domestically. And I completely agree with you. There's no way they're only going to run on XRP. But to say XRP wouldn't be a tool in some use cases, I think is pretty absurd. And the other thing we need to understand is a lot of people like to look at XRP and Ripple in their current form and say, 
oh, it's only a minor improvement based on the current system domestically, therefore they might not switch over. But what we need to understand is in the early days of the internet, there were a lot of things on the internet that were kind of inefficient. There were things on the internet that people might have said, oh, I don't know if this is much better than just writing someone a letter. But as the internet got built out, as the internet got more powerful and added upgrades, we saw that it made absolutely no sense not to switch over to this new system. So right now, when we look at Ripple and XRP's products, it is obvious that XRP solves massive problems cross-border. Domestically, it's a little more foggy, but what I am proposing is that in the future, as we see more upgrades to the XRP ledger, as we see the Ripple network build out and become more liquid and more efficient, I think there is a very good chance it will actually make a lot more sense for these domestic payments to start coming onto things like the XRP ledger. Ultimately, I thought what Shannon said made a ton of sense. It's something I have been talking about for a while, creating these connections to all these different financial institutions in a much more efficient and much more seamless way that puts them all in a level playing field is something that I think is going to be critical to the future financial system, regardless of whether it's domestic or cross borders. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for coming. I hope you enjoyed this update. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. It really does mean so much. And for now, Mikkel out.